The hunt for intelligent life in the universe has held a captivating fascination over the minds of researchers and regular, everyday, earthly citizens alike, going as far back as we can remember. And the word intelligent is just as important as the word life in this scenario. The search for life is exciting, but to think about the possibilities of finding a civilization that resembles our own really makes the imagination take off. Of course, with centuries of astronomers, astronauts, and engineers coming together to make space exploration easier, having not found a shred of evidence that such life forms exist dampens the optimism they'll ever be found. In the last 100 years, the line of thinking surrounding these realizations has actually changed. The obsession with finding intelligent life itself has been heavily replaced with finding the reasons why intelligent life hasn't been discovered. These efforts aren't mere results of failed space probes and lost radio signals sent deep into the cosmos. Rather, they are due to new theories and data points that suggest the odds of intelligent life existing elsewhere in the universe are actually so high it would be a statistical anomaly if they weren't out there, somewhere. So if they should exist, why haven't they made themselves known? One of the hundreds of expert explanations refined over the years is the dark forest hypothesis, an argument for the even greater Fermi paradox. It's one of the more stark theories regarding intelligent life, alien civilizations, and the answer to the question we've all been asking. Why haven't extraterrestrial beings made contact with Earth? The origins of the dark forest hypothesis really date back to 1961, when noted astrophysicist Frank Drake devised an equation that could help give a numeric value or percentage regarding the chances an advanced civilization exists away from Earth. While the result was never to try and pinpoint the exact number of alien life forms flourishing across the cosmos, it was intended to help researchers find progress in their movement, titled the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, also referred to as SETI. To include the best parameters and most relatable data points, Dr. Drake surveyed fellow astrophysicists to stimulate the conversation. The following is what he surmised is the best equation to represent all factors. Let's break it down. N is equal to the number of civilizations harboring potential communication with humans on Earth. R is equal to the mean rate of star formation, multiplied by Fp, the fraction of stars that have planets, multiplied by Ne, the average number of planets that could support life on its star's planetary system. These are multiplied by Fl, Fi, and Fc, the fractions of life-supporting planets that cultivate life, planets with life where life develops intelligence, and intelligent civilizations that cultivate communication, respectively. All of this is then multiplied by L, the average length of time in which civilizations could communicate, and you have a rough estimation of civilizations that might one day connect with our own planet. It should be noted that many of the estimated values inputted into the equation were based on conjecture, rather than evidence or mathematics. The actual numbers are so large in which there would be a heavy amount of derivatives depending on how far the estimated number is from the real number. This causes doubt, as precision is needed, but impossible to reach. Regardless, the Drake equation is one of the best tools available when discussing the possibility of life in outer space, and allows for further theories, such as those associated with the Fermi paradox, to be discussed openly amongst experts. After the Drake equation made its rounds throughout the astrophysical community, the next question became apparent rather quickly. If the likelihood of intelligent life is high a priori, what can account for the discrepancy between that and the complete lack of proof we had and still have to this day? 
Enter the Fermi Paradox, which had actually been coined 10 years earlier by a man by the same name, Italian-American physicist Enrico Fermi. He had asked the obvious questions regarding this discrepancy during a conversation with other physicists, such as Herb York and Ed Teller, regarding traveling at the speed of light and recent UFO reports. But where is everybody? That was the question asked, and it has yet to be answered, resulting in none other than the Fermi Paradox. There are plenty of supporting theories and ideas that have attempted to explain the paradox over the last 75 years or so. We only have limited technology to send out and receive radio emissions. We've only found a limited number of exoplanets with habitable zones, and have limited resources to actually venture out into space with probes, let alone human-led expeditions into the cosmos. Outside of the observational methods, all we have left are hypothetical explanations. These range from simple rare earth hypotheses and scary berserker hypotheses to sociological or economic theories, such as cosmic anti-colonization conjecture and resource deficiency hypotheses. There's also a subset of Fermi paradox theories that revolve around the willingness of extraterrestrial life to come to Earth, for reasons we are either ignorant to or will never know. These include the listening-only hypothesis and the zoo hypothesis, both which will be covered in future analyses. The biggest of all, however, is the dark forest hypothesis, the theory that while alien and other intelligent life forms do exist away from Earth, they have intentionally avoided us or remained silent. Whether it's out of fear, paranoia, or a mixture of both, it's impossible to rule out the existence of something that chooses not to interact with us. The name Dark Forest is actually a relatively new term, as the theory was first explained using a dark forest metaphor in a series of Chinese science fiction novels called The Three-Body Problem, written by Liu Zixin. The second book, aptly titled The Dark Forest, is what introduced three key points to support a newfound form of academia called cosmic sociology. The first key point is the Drake Equation. The second point is the hypothetical idea of survival being the ultimate need of civilizations. While the third point is the hypothetical idea that civilizations expand despite the static nature of all the total matter in the universe. To better describe the theory in full, here's an excerpt from the novel that explains Dark Forest in literary terms. The universe is a dark forest. Every civilization is an armed hunter stalking through the trees like a ghost, gently pushing aside branches that block the path, and trying to tread without a sound. Even breathing is done with care. The hunter has to be careful, because everywhere in the forest are stealthy hunters like him. If he finds another life, another hunter, angel, or a demon, a delicate infant to a tottering old man, a fairy or demigod, there's only one thing he can do. Open fire and eliminate them. In astronomy terms, this means that a potential space-traveling civilization would be just as scared of us as we are scared of them. It would explain why the electromagnetic spectrum is mostly quiet. These civilizations would not be sending us signals if they didn't want us to know they are out there. There are counterpoints to be made with this hypothesis. If a civilization is so advanced, it has the capabilities to fare through space and travel at speeds unobtainable by mankind on Earth, and can detect other life forms in ways that we cannot, why would they be afraid of us? If they know we are here, and they know what we have, surely they could overpower us, right? It's possible for life to exist without a means to destroy other life. What if an advanced civilization spent all of their resources and time making intergalactic space travel possible, but don't have the weapons needed to overtake Earth? What if what they have pales in comparison to our own nuclear power? What if they are true peacekeepers and know that humans on Earth have devolved into self-destruction? This is why the dark forest hypothesis is just another paradox. 
you can find a nearly infinite pool of answers, while another nearly infinite pool of counterarguments sits right next to it. It's all a bunch of what ifs, which is why they don't receive the attention of astrophysicists like the physical, observable information does. It best serves as an arm for game theory, or more specifically, the sequential and incomplete information game that is used in this theory. In the game, all players act in a specific order, each one playing after the other's turn ends. However, nobody has access to all of the information, and the only condition to winning is ultimate survival. There are scarce resources, and players can only choose one of three options. 1. Destroy another player's civilization. 2. Alert other players of other civilizations. 3. Ignore everything and do nothing. Of course, the Dark Forest hypothesis plays on the idea of every player picking option number 3. While it guarantees survival, it also guarantees there won't be a winner. And as hard as that is for us to understand here on Earth, in which supremacy and survival are not separate entities, it just might be the way the rest of the universe functions. Survive another day in the unknown, and don't let anyone else know you're there, remaining hidden in the eternal vastness and never-ending mystery of the Dark Forest. <laughs>